All right, and there it is, the sound of the closing bell at the New York Stock Exchange, signaling the end of another trading week on Wall Street. That gentleman there retiring after 40 years of working on the trading floor. Let's see where the numbers ended the day. Well, it was a relatively flat day for the Dow, ending the week up about 130 points. It was a similar day for the S&P 500 and the tech-heavy Nasdaq. Both ended the day relatively flat as well. Mm. Let's bring in Jill Schlesinger now and J.D. Durkin for a look back at the markets this week. Jill, as you all well know, is a CBS News business analyst. And J.D. is the host of The Street. We can hear the noise of the floor behind you there, J.D. Let's, let's start with you um, because there's so many different components to what goes into the trends in the market. In your view, how is all of this a reflection of the response to the recent interest rate hike by the Fed? I mean, to be honest, I think investors, since we got the announcement on Wednesday, have really tried to make heads or tails uh, of what to take away from the announcement of an increase to the federal funds rate of 25 basis points. As we talked about Wednesday afternoon here on CBS News, there was something in that announcement for both the bulls and the bears. But ultimately, I think as you head into today's session, it really seems like investors are willing to shake off any of the concerns specifically in the banking sector. But it wasn't overall a very positive day, at least not throughout the entire trading session. By my count, we had seven swings back and forth between positive and negative territory for the Dow, nine swings today for the S&P 500. But with five trading days left to go in the month and the quarter, uh, the S&P 500 is up 2.8% year to date. The Nasdaq up 12.6% year to date. And the Dow is down currently 3.1% year to date. So I think at least still trying to make heads or tails about where we go from here to allow the dust settle from Wednesday's announcement uh, did help uh, accelerate at least a little bit of buying into positive territory uh, as we head into the close earlier today. All right. So Wall Street is one thing. What about Main Street? Uh, Jill, how are these latest interest rate hikes impacting the average American's wallet? Well, you know, it's been a pretty big wallop in time for anyone who owes money, right? If yeah. you think about this, the Federal Reserve has now raised interest rates nine consecutive times. We've gone from zero to almost 5%. That is huge. It is a remarkably quick campaign. And that means anyone who's got credit card debt, maybe who's going out and buying a new car with an auto loan, an adjustable rate mortgage, a small business loan, those people are paying more. Conversely, savers are kind of happy because you see savings rates, CD rates, I-bond rates, all of these things really rewarding the saver out there. And I just want to say one thing for all the people who have 401ks, you know, the stock market is not the economy and vice versa. And I think what's really critical is that, as J.D.'s reporting, that there are swings back and forth. Nobody really knows what's happening. Mm. And even Jerome Powell said during his press conference, I don't know, he must have said it 10 times. And the reality is that if you are a long-term investor, and this has been a pretty spooky time for people, you remember you stick to your game plan. You try not to outguess the markets. Right now, the stock investment community thinks things are going well. The bond market, not so much. And so when you bring those two things together, you say, no one really knows. So if I stick to this with the long term and I buy nice, cheap index funds, I'm going to stay out of trouble. Which I think um, marries well with advice you've given and other financial experts have given, which is that you can always just do the boring thing. Save over the long term in the quiet and, and safe and secure places. JD, to you, one of the fundamentals that's different these days is, is these mixed messaging uh, from the Treasury Department over the banking sector. Some bank stocks are tumbling. Uh, the rating of some banks have been degraded. What steps, in your view, will Wall Street want to see to ease concerns around banking right now? Uh, well, one of the, uh, the loudest calls that you hear from people, I think, in the investment community and even kind of splashy celebrities in the business world like Elon Musk is to say, hey, U.S. government, now is a great time to insure all deposits, not just to a limit of 250000 Remember, that was the big announcement we got two Sundays ago from the Treasury, from the Federal Reserve, as well as from the FDIC. To the point about mixed messaging, I noticed that Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen spoke at least by my count four times this week, and there were subtle shifts in Secretary Yellen's message. Earlier in the week, she had indicated there is no intention right now for federal regulators to increase those protections, in other words, to increase those insurances on deposits north of a quarter million dollars. But then later in the week, she started to indicate, okay, if there is the potential where we have to step in to avoid a traditional bank run, there are tools in the toolbox for us to be able to do so here. Uh, to that point, one really interesting event, two interesting events, I should say, will be next week. We've got two congressional hearings, one on Tuesday in the Senate, one on Wednesday 
in the House. They won't get the splashy attention as if Jay Powell or Janet Yellen themselves were there. But you will have the chairman of the FDIC there facing tough questions from both Democrats and Republicans. That'll be something interesting for a lot of market observers to watch very closely to see what, what if it ever, might be able to move on that crucial question of to what de degree are those deposits protected by the federal government moving forward. Yeah, I, I think, Jill, all of that activity is raising questions in some Americans' minds about the soundness of the American banking system. Do we have a sense how most people feel about how secure their money is in banks? You know, we had a recent CBS News poll that said something that always makes me laugh because it's it's like the same poll that I've always seen about lawyers. Like, I hate lawyers, but I like my lawyer. Oh. And <laughs> right. so the poll essentially right. said, I think I'm okay with my institution. I'm not sure about the whole system. And I think the, the reality is here that when you think about what is the banking system, it does rely on confidence. Mm -hmm. It is a weird emotional part of this financial system. What is important about that FDIC insurance coverage is the vast majority of Americans have less than $250,000 in an account. Right. They are not to be worried about anything. And as far as Janet Yellen making a blanket statement that everyone's going to be okay and we're going to insure everyone, I just don't think that's going to happen. They don't have the authority. This would have to go through Congress to get that FDIC limit raised forever. And the reality is when you really think about what we're trying to do in the system, I think we really have to focus on the regulation. If you want people to feel secure in the system, we have to have a regulatory and supervisory body, and that can be the Federal Reserve Bank, one of these regional ones of San Francisco or New York, the Federal Reserve itself for the big banks, for the smaller banks. You just want to know, are they keeping their eyes on the right metrics? Is it really about the size of the bank or is it the compositions of the loans they're giving? Mm -hmm. Is it really just the amount of uninsured deposits or is it the amount of any particular type of industry in that depository mm. base. So I think there's going to be a lot of questions. I think that would bolster Americans' feelings about the system if they Valid knew that. Valid questions, too. Yeah, absolutely. They've got to answer that. Um, I want to throw a bit of a wild card question your way. <laughs> With the SVB collapse, you had a lot of tech companies saying to me they feel less ambitious, they want to take fewer risks and have a more old school approach to their business. We've had a lot of conversation this week about a potential ban of TikTok. Mm. This is a new flashy social media mm -hmm. app that all the kids want to use. And for small business owners, they're finding ways to make money. The CEO of TikTok made the argument that banning TikTok will hurt US businesses, will hurt the US economy as a result. What do you make of that argument? Is there some truth to it or? I mean, first of all, who knows? I think that the, this is the man who is running the U.S. operations of TikTok or ByteDance from the Chinese company. And look, I don't think he made very compelling um, arguments. I think that there are a lot of people who have made money using TikTok and using social media. And to the argument that, oh, I'm a tech person, I'm not going to be as ambitious, boo-hoo on you. Then someone else will go find, the, uh, find their ambition and they'll make something. That's true. I don't think that, I think it's going to be a disappointing moment for a lot of users of TikTok if this is banned. Is this going to have a real hit on the economy? Well, I guess if you're sitting back and saying, well, I don't know what on earth I would ever do without TikTok and do nothing else, yes. But I don't mm -hmm. think that's who the entrepreneurs are who are using this platform. They'll find so, a way. I of course they'll find a way, and it's just it's garbage argument to say, oh, without that, I wouldn't be where I am. Hmm. Okay, you, you are where you are. Now make it plan B. All right. Well, J.D., with everything going on surrounding the company, it was a big week for its competitors. Um, what could a ban on TikTok mean for the value of other social media apps here in the U.S.? First of all, a garbage argument. I'm a big fan of Jill's reporting. There is no doubt. I, I think that's, <laughs> that's really the, the yes. I really think that's really representative of how a lot of people are looking at this, yeah. especially if your name happens to be Mark Zuckerberg. You would love yeah. for U.S. Congress to move forward and to ban something like TikTok. And it's a really big week if you're an investor in a stock like Meta, because even before we had the TikTok CEO show up to Capitol Hill, get a big upgrade on the stock from Morgan Stanley, because a lot of analysts are saying, hey, there's increased engagement on Instagram Reels. Of course, we can't forget that Instagram is owned by Meta. Yes. That was number one. Number two, you got the TikTok CEO coming to Capitol Hill, facing really tough questions from both Democrats and Republicans. And we saw uh, Meta stock go up 3.7% this week. That stock is up 65% year to date. A very similar story for Snap, another close perceived competitor to TikTok. That stock shot up 8.8% this week and is currently up 30% year to date. So you got a lot of these other competitors that are sitting there very patiently saying, okay, Congress, 
we'll sit there and wait. If you want to move forward with the TikTok ban, we would be more than happy to absorb your client base uh, in favor of our own. Uh, I don't think they would really be crying very much if, uh, if TikTok were to be banned moving forward. All right, Jill Schlesinger, J.D. Durkin, so good to have your insight and analysis yes. to help us navigate all of this economic news. Thank you both so much.